Welcome to a special replay of a You Were the Best classic interview from the Satellite Sisters Archive. Over the holidays, we're sharing four of our all-time favorites, Nora Ephron, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Roz Chast, and Robin Roberts. We'll be back with our first episode of 2023 on Tuesday, January 10th. In the meantime, enjoy. We're the Satellite Sisters. We're the Satellite Sisters. I'm Sheila Dolan here with my sisters, Liz, Leon, and Julie. Monica Dolan is in Portland, Oregon. Welcome to You're the Best Encore Interviews from the Satellite Sisters. J.J. Abrams is with us. J.J., thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. You know okay. Tina Brown. She's an award-winning journalist. Tina, welcome to Satellite Sisters. I'm so thrilled to be with you guys. Oh, we love this book. Robin Roberts, we're so thrilled to have you here on Satellite Sisters. Welcome to the show. You know, Liz, my sister would have busted me like that, too. <laughs> welcome to You're the Best. Encore interviews. Encore interviews from the Satellite Sisters. From the Satellite Sisters. We are the Satellite Sisters. I am Liz Dolan here with my sister Leon Dolan, and this is one of our You're the Best Encore interviews. These are the Satellite Sisters' favorite interviews over the air that we have re edited and we are re releasing in celebration of our book, You're the Best, because our show has always been about. But we said the sound of friendship. And so we go and we listen back to some of these interviews. And when you hear the great ones with people that talk to us and just we could have that kind of friendly conversation, you think it's almost like you already knew each other. And that's the way I feel about this discussion with Roz Chast, Liam, the famous cartoonist. Um, and this is you, Sheila, and Monica talking to Roz. So this gives it a whole extra layer of humor. Well, Liz, we used to refer to that team as the JV team. You know, <laughs> when we were in the studio together, it was just the three of us, and you and Julie were off for the day, like the big sisters, the varsity uh, athletes. Uh, we were the JV team. And what was special was Roz came into the studio. That doesn't always happen on a radio show. Um, a lot of times they just call in, but she was on a book tour for the theories of every, the theory of everything um, in Los Angeles. So she came into the studio. She was right there with Sheila and I. I have been a lifelong fan of her wonderful, neurotic, crazy, super funny cartoons, uh, as it's clear Monica and Sheila have too. I actually brought in a cartoon off my fridge to show her. Um, and what I think is the most interesting about this interview, first of all, it's funny. I mean, she's it's funny. funny. It's funny. Really funny. Uh, yes. But also, she really you really get a sense of what her process is like, what it's like to be a cartoonist for The New Yorker. And uh, not easy, even if you're Roz Chast. You, mm -hmm. you get rejected a lot by the New Yorker. So take that, all you writers out there. Take it to heart. Even Roz Chast gets rejected a lot. But <laughs> it was an absolute delight to re-listen to this. And then I, I cracked the book open again. You know, it's, it's one of my fave coffee table books. Uh, my, my look through it all the time. And, um, it was just wonderful to hear her discuss it again. Some of her wacky, funny ideas and where they come from. Yeah, there are three things I really love about this interview, Leanne. One is the way she talks about her obsessions and including her whole germ theory. Um, one is just her voice. She has such a great New York voice. Yeah. And yeah. she just, if it's possible to sound like a cartoonist, she sounds <laughs> like a cartoonist. And the third one is, as I listened through, a lot of this is really Sheila. This is confessions from Sheila on a wide range of things. So I think that there was a very special energy in the studio that day because Roz was in the room with you and Sheila. So um, it really, really made me laugh when I re-listened to it. Yeah. And right in the middle, I recall like, oh, gosh, I should have had her sign someone a book for somebody. Yes. <laughs> this kind of thing. Huh. I was busy in those days. I never got to the bookstore. <laughs> anyway, it really was a pleasure. I think if you're a creative person or just a fan of Ross Chess, you are really going to enjoy this interview. Because you know what? She's the best, Liz. She, she's the best cartoonist. I just love her. So this she's is the best. This is Ross Chast on the Satellite Sisters. We've never had a cartoonist on the show, Leanne. Well, I don't think people put radio and cartoons <laughs> together. Sometimes that's hard to do. But we go where no radio people have ever gone. That's, that's right. right. It's a thrill to welcome Raz Chas to Satellite Sisters. Raz has been drawing cartoons for the New Yorker magazine and many others, including Scientific America, for nearly 30 years. Her stuff is so laugh out loud funny because it's everything you thought of but weren't 
quite smart enough or paranoid enough to put on a page and you couldn't quite draw every marital dispute or argument you've had with your child or bad grocery store experience, it's going to end up in a Roz Chast cartoon. Roz, thank you for being here on Satellite Sisters. Thank you for having me. So do you constantly have people do this? Roz, you've been hanging up on my refrigerator for three years now. I've had the Persons of Faith cartoon on my fridge for many years now. Is, do you get that a lot? Like, you're I on do. my fridge. Yes, yes. In <laughs> fact, I think uh, if they ever have a cartoon museum where I think they should have refrigerators where the cartoons are actually <laughs> hanging up on the refrigerators. That's a brilliant idea. <laughs> uh, you know, it's your stuff is so relatable, but it's just one step beyond because you're this is what you do for a living and we don't do it. I mean, are you constantly on the lookout for the little, you know, picadillos in life that are going to end up in your cartoons? Um, to some extent. I mean, I, I, it's, it's almost like a bad habit kind of way of thinking. Um, things just sort of occur to me that are sometimes funny. And I think, well, <laughs> uh, I better write that down yeah. before I forget it. And then, of course, I don't. And I forget it. So. How does it work with being a professional cartoonist? Like, your work appears regularly in The New Yorker. Right. But what what it happens there? Like, do you have to turn in 10 a week or 5 a week or 1 a week? Or is everyone a gem? Everyone's a winner? Oh, well, I feel that way. Yeah. But okay. nobody else does. Um, the way it works is that because it is a weekly magazine, all of us, all the... Uh, contract people, about 30 or 40 of us, were on a weekly schedule where the deadline, uh, there's an art meeting every Wednesday. And so for me, that means my deadline, since I fax in, is Tuesday evening. And I usually turn in between five and ten cartoons a week sketches. And then they uh, sometimes choose one, sometimes they don't choose any, occasionally they choose two. Uh, but I turn in uh, between five and ten rough ideas for cartoons every week. That's a lot of ideas. That's a lot of funny. Yeah, <laughs> that is. <laughs> well, I think that it is, but uh, they they don't. There's a lot of it's. There's a lot of rejection. There's like piles and piles of you know ideas that clearly need mm-hmm. to go through some more filters mm-hmm. before they get there. But when you're at like a dinner party with people, do they automatically assume they're going to end up in the magazine next week? I mean, are people afraid of you, Ross? <laughs> that they're gonna they're gonna do something and. You you know, then they're going to see themselves, you know, in some egg, the Russian eggs that you draw or on the cover of your fake magazines. Um, I hope not. <laughs> you know, I can't help it if they, you know, do something. But <laughs> what about your kids? I know you have two kids and some of the the best ones in the book. I mean, just I noticed on I went to CartoonBank.com and like your number one most popular one to resell is the bad mom cards. Yes. Which oh. Have, Monica, you know what I'm talking yes, about, right? Yes, I do. Yes. Oh, my gosh. It's so funny. I mean, if we can do cartoons on the radio, it's just cards like, you know, uh, you know, mom let her son watch Nintendo for two hours <laughs> just to get him out of her hair. And, you know, the card for the mom that gave her kids orange soda instead of orange juice. And yes. so my son is a huge cartoon fan. So he was reading through your book the other day. He's like, Mom, you've done every single thing on the bad <laughs> mom card. <laughs> And so have I. (laughs) But are your kids like, okay, mom, enough. I can't, no more jokes about my SAT scores? No, and I don't think I've I've done that joke. Okay. (laughs) Well, there's one headstone with their SAT scores on it. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe it's not their SAT scores. No. Maybe they were my SAT (laughs) scores. (laughs) (laughs) They were too high to be your SAT scores. We're talking to Roz Chas. She's a cartoonist. Her new book is Theories of Everything, Selected, Collected, Health and Expected cartoons by Roz Chast. How many? It's like 500 cartoons, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah, I haven't counted. And I, I think know. of the dozens on the floor of your of now your studio at home. That makes me sad to know there are Roz Chast cartoons that may never see the light of day. Yeah, well, if you saw them, maybe you wouldn't feel that way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now you have an obsession about a bunch of things. Yes. And one of them is algebra. Okay, what happened in algebra, Roz? <laughs> I mean, you can tell us. We're your satellite sisters. Like, okay. is algebra just always funny, or did you really have some sort of <laughs> disturbing experience in algebra that you just can't work through yet? I well, clearly, I haven't worked through all of the bad things that happened to me in math. Okay, but <laughs> algebra was just the beginning. It was when we hit trigonometry that I thought this is useful information for some people, yeah. <laughs> but but I don't want to, there's certain numbers in trigonometry, like point oh 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 one three seven, and I thought, 
I don't want to know that number. <laughs> I don't want to think about this number. I don't want to factor it into any equation. I, I don't care anything about this number. And, uh, and yet I was forced to, you know, encounter it for like a year. Yeah. And, uh, now, Sheila, no. you too. I mean, I, I think we've noticed some remarkable, you know, that sameness between you and Russ. You have an algebra. Well, well I, I failed algebra right. the first time out. And I blamed Mrs. Miller, right, Monica, our algebra teacher, who used to dress in what? Oh, she had, she had like, uh, she had these dresses that were like supposed to be three pieces, but they're only one. It was, it was like a, a one piece. A one piece <laughs> with like a vest over it. Yeah, Mrs. Miller. Oof. So I, I definitely failed algebra. I mean, I think I, I pulled out of the class halfway through. And I got what... Well, That's because you didn't have Tracy Risley. That's the only way, Roz, I got through algebra. My best friend, Tracy Risley, was a complete math wizard. And she helped me. Well, you cheated your way through algebra. I, I, she helped me with my homework. I, I used to copy Tracy's homework every night. So no wonder I couldn't pass any of the tests. We're, algebra was really a terrible experience for me. Right. And like, because we were such a big family, I mean, no, no one had tutors. Except for me. I was the only one in our family that got a tutor. And mom, I've completely blocked out the name of the math tutor that I had in ninth grade. But um, if you remember her name, she lived on Harbor Road. Call us, 866-33-SISTER. <laughs> but the, when I got to my math tutor the first session, I realized she realized that I would never get through Algebra 1 because I really didn't know how to add or subtract. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was not coming that easily to me. Like 16 minus 7? I still don't... I mean, I don't know what it is. I have to figure it out. <laughs> well, I remember the very first time I encountered math, and it was it was addition, and I cried. <laughs> and it was... I think I was probably in kindergarten visiting my cousin's first grade class, right. and they were doing addition, and I remember it was like 2 plus 2 equals 4, and I had no <laughs> idea what they were talking about. And it was so upsetting that I cried. Right. It's very conceptual, math is. And yeah. I mean, I taught first grade and I had a hard time <laughs> teaching addition. I really, I had to work with the counters myself. You know, it really forced me to learn how to add. Well, that's why Ross's cartoon, 11th grade math for nincompoops, really <laughs> spoke to you. And <laughs> one of the examples is, let's look at X equals 10. Mm. And then the bubble says, let's not and say we did. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> Again, hard to do cartoons on the radio, but we've been so enjoying your book, Roz. Do you think most people just get over algebra and move on? But you've had this outlet for the things that have sort of stuck with you over the years. Yeah, I, well, I have a hard time, I think, letting go of things that I just seemed so unfair at the time. It's like nobody's really apologized to me for trigonometry. <laughs> yet, you know? Did you always kind of see in cartoons, though? Because I'm, I'm interested in that. I mean, visual artists, that's something none of us can do. Not, none of the Dolan family has any visual talent whatsoever. But visual artists, I mean, you're... You're a visual artist and you're a writer and, and a comedian all thrown in there. But did you always kind of see in cartoon blocks, like even sitting in your 11th grade algebra class, were you thinking cosine is a funny word? I'm going oh, to yeah. use it again someday. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, I was doing cartoons when I was really little, like you know, four or five years old. I mean, I just, I always loved to draw and I like to sort of make up funny stories that went along with the drawings. And one thing about cartooning that's so great is that for, you know, for somebody who likes to draw and likes to write, you don't have to choose, you know, you can kind of do both. And then for someone like us, I mean, you're in the New Yorker and wow, those stories are really long, but the yeah. cartoons are nice and short. <laughs> right, right. And it's so It's easy. a nice break. It is. It yeah. really is. I mean, I take the New Yorker, but I don't always read the New Yorker, but I really enjoy the cartoons. Well, the cartoons are kind of like a magazine within a magazine in a way. It's like there's the cartoon magazine and it kind of marches as you threw, you know, uh, I always think of that. You know, one of your one of the series of cartoons that you draw are magazines for special interest groups. And Monica, there was one in particular you thought our mother would enjoy. Oh, yeah, there was one about there was a, a magazine about um, errands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for people. Oh, I'm trying to find it. Okay, errands. The magazines for the errands lifestyle. <laughs> that, I love, it, that is our mother. And yeah. what, one of the topics, you know, on the cover of the magazine is new errands you never considered. <laughs> <laughs> I like. 
things to do before you do errands. A, check- <laughs> a checklist. checklist, yeah. And then I thought of uh, our sister Liz because you also have another magazine in there. It's called Bad Housekeeping. Okay, I'm sorry, Liz. Maybe <laughs> no, that should well, be for she's me. She's not here, but we can Bad talk Bad Housekeeping, her. the magazine for women who couldn't care less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Liz proudly says she doesn't care. She doesn't care about keeping her house clean. And one then, of the stories in there is, I let my house plants die. One person story. That, that is my story, Ross, actually. That's funny. <laughs> do people come up to you with ideas like, oh, you should do a cartoon about this? Yeah, definitely. And do you ever do those ideas? You're like, uh-huh, sure. Almost yeah, right. never. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what we figured. Yeah, because yeah, we're not really that fun. I mean, I'm sure other people's ideas are just not that funny. Well, it's not. I think that they might be, but I think uh, it's it's kind of like if you collect something. If you collect like blue glass vases, let's mm-hmm. say, you, there's something that only you know that you want for your collection. And somebody might give you a very lovely blue glass vase, but it's just not anything that interests you for some reason. So it's kind of like that. Her new book is called Theories of Everything. And you know what? I'm going to get this for my friend Chris for her birthday. Which is, it's a perfect gift for the satellite sister in your life. And now I feel like an idiot because you're sitting here, Roz. And if I had just gone to buy it yesterday, (gasps) you could have signed it. Oh, that always happens to you, Roz. I know. (laughs) Oh, well. Okay. I'll get over it. All right, Sheila. Roz, you're a famous germaphobe. I mean, it comes through in your cartoons. Well, you just have a fear of catching, like, any disease possible. Well, I don't even feel like I have to catch it from a germ. I think that my theory, <laughs> my theory is that like if I think about it enough, I'll probably get it. Contract it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So do, are you f- afraid of touching things at the supermarket? Let's say for instance, like the stylus pens that you sign with on the debit card. I actually, I, it, my, my germ theory, it's, it's like beyond germs. Okay. So that I'm not like one of these people that always has a little bottle of like that Purell or whatever. Okay. I mean, I'm not always washing. It's bigger my, than that. It's bigger than that. Okay. It's more like the kind of psychological. Like I just know that if I read mm. about something, I am going to get it. Right. Okay. Oh, know. yeah. Like that uh, in the, in the uh, New York Times magazine section where they have that diagnosis page. Yeah. <laughs> where they go oh, through all yeah. these. Oh, I can't read that. Yeah. No. I, I shouldn't, but I do. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. But no, I found my... Now I have this thing where I can't touch anything, at, <laughs> you know, in public places. Like, I started putting my hands in plastic bags at the supermarket. You to, did yeah, not. Yeah, to, to touch the stylus pen. And then I read about this thing. It's a fingerprint. You can get your finger imprinted. <laughs> Roz's face. I should write a cartoon about Roz's face right now. She looks fascinated by this concept. You can just, you know, put your credit card right on your thumb. But then that means... <laughs> you can't use okay. a plastic bag? I, I don't think you have it's, that product. It's biometric right. technology, Leon. You never have to swipe or touch anything again. Oh, you I can, like that. It gets scanned. You can borrow this, Roz, if you want to <laughs> yeah. use it. There. I gave Roz Chast an idea. I can't believe that. Which she's not going to use. I know. She's that's just... weird. Well, how do they get that onto your thumb, though? Well, th- th- we need to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Theories of everything. That's that's disturbing. <laughs> I, I don't know. Mm. Yeah. All right, yeah. Roz, we've got the holidays coming up. You have a lot of holiday cartoons in here. Just, again, another theme is like the bad holiday gifts that you've received or others have received or been foisted on you. So how are you going to, I mean, what is the worst gift you've ever received? Oh, my Does God. something stand out or just, do you just feel, once again, holiday gifts have been against you? Like if there's a bad holiday gift out there, you'll get it. I, I just think that I hate. I hate all holidays, actually. Really? Okay. <laughs> I really do. I just, I don't like a lot of excitement, and I don't like the sort of forced, now I must buy things for people thing. I, I, you know, I think one of the most depressing things at holidays is seeing those piles of ugly sweaters in Macy's. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's, uh... Okay. And that, that makes you, that bums you out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Roz. We have a cough button here. Roz, no, okay. she's going to sneeze, but that's okay. <laughs> it's live radio. <laughs> Oh, God oh. bless you, Russ <laughs> No, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> it's all those dusty sweaters at Macy's. I know. I know. I know. talking about germs, and, and now I'm clearly going to get something. No, else. you're amongst fellow sneezers. We sneeze all the time. That's yeah. why we have this handy cough button here yeah, on the radio. It doesn't say sneeze. It just no, sneeze. No, but it does. It shuts your mic off. So. Oh, good. Okay, there you well, go. Good She's going to 
use that in one of our cartoons right like, now at the end. <laughs> well, you do have the one about the dream remote control, which I enjoy. What were some of the features on the dream remote control? To, uh, to uh, get up, uh, go to bed, uh, uh, clean your room, right. um, <laughs> put that down, pick that up, you know, whatever. That's what I like, the directions for your children on the remote control. Yes. I love that so much. It would be great to have. You know, can I ask? It's hard for me to tell. Pro cat or not? I used to have cats. Okay. okay. I love cats. Okay. All right. Okay. Cause some, there are a lot of cat related cartoons, mm-hmm. but I guess it's, I guess it's the prism from which we view the cartoon. Yeah. I, Again, we're sneezers, so we're allergic to many cats. Yes. That's my, my son and my husband are allergic to cats. So we had to give our cats some. Oh, okay. Oh. Thanks for listening. You're the best. For more You're the Best Encore interviews or Satellite Sisters podcasts, go to SatelliteSisters.com or iTunes. And don't forget, call your Satellite Sister. Call your Satellite Sister. Call your Satellite Sister. sister.